Hey all, and welcome back to Pokemon Colosseum. We've given power back to the people of Pyrite, or at least their Colosseum, I guess. So, uh, we're going to enter the Pyrite tournament and hopefully snag us another Shadow Pokemon. But don't tell anyone, we're not supposed to know that's the prize right now. Well, of course, but still, uh, it, it'll be fine. We'll just mosey on in there, kill everybody, and come out with a Shadow Pokemon, <laughs> it'll be fine. Well... It's fine. We don't even know what these shadow Pokemon things are at this point, do we? Like, ignore the fact that we've got four of them in our party and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like that the gift that they advertise at the front is, oh, you get a TM. Like, that's not quite what the rumours have been saying, though. <laughs> and also, I mean, there's the whole thing of a TM as your prize? That's a bit crap, really, if I'm honest. I could just go down the shops or find one on the road. It would have been worth more back in like Gen 3 and so on because actually what gen did it like start having TMs be infinite usable, if that's the correct grammatical term? I believe that was black and white that started doing that because that was around the time when they sort of realised that a lot of these older mechanics were a little bit archaic so they just sort of streamlined it a lot uh. and I believe it was around that sort of time where they started building the worlds in a way that you wouldn't need HMs as much as well. Yes. Um, and then obviously Sun and Moon just replaced that concept entirely with the ride Pokemon which kind of makes sense honestly after all that time. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, it, you're definitely right in that it was Gen 5 when TMs suddenly became multi-use, and thank God, because it was probably one of the most infuriating things pre-Gen 5, because like you'd get Earthquake or something, and you'd be like, right, I've got to be very careful on what Pokemon I use this with. And so actually creating the teams that you wanted, I mean, particularly for anybody who played competitive competitive Pokemon, it's a bit like, yeah, kind of would like the uh, greater opportunities for creating the team and the movesets that you want. So it makes sense. I wonder what the competitive scene was even like back in the Gen 1 and 2 days, or like pre-Gen 4, I suppose. It's kind of hard to imagine. It is, because like, it's one of the things I would imagine that it'd be much smaller, like, little islands of competitive players and that given that it wasn't online at the time so it makes you think how there were probably like completely different popular strategies in different locations depending on who was playing whereas like comparing that nowadays when you got like the online games both the official releases and I think it's Showdown isn't it that simulator one that a lot of people use I know there have been a uh, few maybe. ones like, I think there was Battle.net or something years back that's been mm. replaced by something else now. I'm so out of touch. I'm not even going to try and sound smart with this. Well, back <laughs> during the uh, short-lived Hellfire vs. series, I remember taking on Helldragon in some kind of online Pokemon thing or above. I do remember that like, there's been a few different ones. Like, my background with the Pokemon online scene is wasn't really involved with the competitive side of things. Like I, I was more around like the fan games and fan art and that mm. kind of little portion of the fan base and whatnot. So uh -huh. like the smart people stuff kind of completely <laughs> eluded me. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, speaking of fan games, I remember playing one I forget what age I was. But it was either called Pokemon Brown or Pokemon black this is way before the actual pokemon black and white came out and your starter pokemon were either caterpie weedle and i think onyx was the third one <laughs> well i mean they're all like snake shapes so i <laughs> guess there's a thing <laughs> you're not wrong claim you're not wrong richie you ever played any fan games on one i'm pokemon mate I do not believe I have, but that's largely just because I'm one of those losers who just tends to play um, kind of console releases. I've played a couple of things online, but no actual proper major fan games. Okay. Not through any active avoiding of them, it's just I've not really gone out in search of them, so I've not really been bothered. Right, laziness is the reason then. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> that was a lot of words to come to that conclusion, yeah. But yeah, like, my history, I was on the staff for the failed Pokemon Acanthit project, which unfortunately didn't go anywhere. We kind of got into this process of like the Acanthit cycle, where like we'd have a load of great ideas and then we'd realise that we don't actually have the manpower to actually implement them, so oh, they no. get scrapped and then oh, it no. spin back around <laughs> and it went nowhere for almost a decade. That was kind of 
sad to look back on, honestly. It seems like every iteration of the Hellfire Collins website, if I'm going to be honest with you. But we had much <laughs> yeah. more talented people working on the sides for us, like Alistair. And actually, I forget the other people who made it. I'm sorry. I'm, it's a brain fart. I don't unappreciate you, okay? And also, it's been a very long time since that website was a thing. Yeah, which kind of is the way that things have moved on now. Like, we don't really need one anymore, do we? Because, like, people don't go out their way to look for YouTube channels' own websites these days compared to, like, back in the day when all the big names had, like, their own site where everything would be based. Well, I mean, like, Blind Wave, a reaction channel, has a website. I think Two Best Friends had a website up until recently, but they said it was like a money sink from day one. And uh, I've got to be honest, YouTube don't really pay that well nowadays. I can't give you specifics, but that's why the Patreon's needed. So please, pledge there. October's coming up. You can make me play spooky games, I swear. <laughs> I, think, I think the thing that a lot of people don't seem to realise in terms of the, like these websites and that is that hosting video is incredibly expensive because these files ain't small if you go onto like any web hosting service usually they only intend for you to like just host like text-based stuff there so they'll give you like a couple of gig for whatever your fee for the month is like <laughs> i laugh <laughs> yeah whereas like then i send tom a video like let's finish rendering and it's like eight gig and like yeah that's Jesus. like three times what they'd allow us <laughs> compress your videos you fucking quality cook Compression is for pussies, come on! <laughs> <laughs> and also, to be fair, YouTube compresses the hell out of everything anyway, so you might as well go as high in as possible, so then it's, you know, better off in the uh, the long run. <laughs> Thank you for enabling me. <laughs> That's gotten much worse in recent years, the YouTube compression app, so... Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I see that little bit of artifacting between frames and it fucks with my head because I've tried to fix it so it doesn't happen, but it never works. Well, my capture card just artifacts for whatever reason. I notice it primarily in like colourful games like Nino Kunic 2 and so on for the quick look, but uh, eh, what are you going to do? I guess I'll um, get an Elgato one of these days. I, think, I suppose we should actually talk about what's going on on screen now, but I figured rather than try to make awkward commentary about battles after battles after battles, we just kind of, kind of like talk about whatever, so long as it's tangentially related to what we're covering. I actually really like the rusty, almost Mad Max, like post-apocalyptic style of the Pyrite Coliseum here. And you know, it's not just the title Pokemon Coliseum, which makes you think it's like a stadium game. There are a bunch of like actual coliseums in the game where you do various competitions and whatnot. So it's it's nice. It's aesthetically consistent, is what it is. Over the course of the game, you will actually find a lot of use in the coliseums because, like, these are your grind spots, and that's both grinding for experience and also grinding for money. Because, like, the economy in this game, it's kind of low. Like, you don't really get that much money going around. So, if yeah. you want to stock up on, like, as well as your great balls, ultra balls, whatever, also like health items and that which you will need for some of the later battles because this game does have a little bit of a difficulty curve that becomes quite noticeable. Yes. But, like, you will need to do a few cycles of the Colosseum from time to time just to, like, get some actual income coming through. Oh my god, the absolute <laughs> state of the N64 Vortex model. Oh yeah, seriously. <laughs> I didn't notice it when I originally played Coliseum, but it is, like, you look back at it now and you're just like, how did they think they were going to get away with that? I mean, they got away with it, because obviously tiny monitors were probably classic CRT TVs, so everyone was just like, yeah, that looks alright, that looks about right. <laughs> you say that, but I'm watching this video at, like, a quarter of the size of my screen, and, like, the little stair steps around, like, all the edges and that are still bothering me, so... Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be terrified to play that on my uh, my current TV. It would just be like, oh, God, I can see everything. That was cool as... There was different music for the semi-final battle. How's the final battle going to sound? Oh, my God, he is swole as fuck. What is it with people's proportions in this game? Making them, like, Dragon Ball Z characters. <laughs> Whoa, what I think it might be is I think they just have the one bodybuilder model and they just recolor their outfits depending on who it is. Mm. Yes. Really? A Goldeen to back up a Bagon? The dragon I get, I'm not really sure what the Goldeen's gonna do. Well, look at this guy here. Are you gonna call his Pokemon pathetic to his face? <laughs> not to his face, no. <laughs> no, I'll just be a little bitch about him on the internet instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
But yeah, like again, this is one of the things that I know I mentioned in an earlier part, how it's hard to predict what Pokemon they're going to have from their character classes, unlike a lot of the main games. But when you do get like a big muscly build, bodybuilder guy throw out a Goldeen, it does kind of stand out like maybe they just like randomly flipped open the Poke Pokedex page at random and just thought, yep, fuck it, Goldeen. Really? <laughs> no, not even like a Machoke or something? Like, given the levels, you could have like theoretically had a Machoke at this point in the game. I'm not sure about the Bagon, because I think Bagon evolves quite late. Like, yes. I'm pretty sure the final stage into Salamence is like 55, so I would imagine Shelvin's quite high. But, like, Goldeen, you could have evolved that. Like, come on. Get yourself a fuck yes seeking, because you know you want to have the main Pokemon as well. <laughs> no, Flame, we only use the freshest of memes here. Why don't you get a Growlithe for a Doge? <sighs> okay. I will dab on you for that later. I'll oh, show up your fucking insult. You have no right to judge me. <laughs> um, hey, I only bring the most quality memes to this channel, which is why I bought all your base in like fucking 2017. <laughs> <laughs> we are a fucking train wreck of a channel these days. No wonder Brain Scratch overtook us years ago. <laughs> and like everyone else, it's come to mention it. But yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Let's see. Uh, no type disadvantage here. Let's just hope Magnemite doesn't have. What's that one that attacks the whole battlefield? Discharge? I think that's the electric move. Did that exist in Gen 3? I'm not sure, Richie, please. <laughs> Richie, our resident Bulbapedia man, get on it. <laughs> yeah, bear the sack. Although I probably should just type it. Ew. Yeah, I don't just. just... I just typed in discharge, and that was not really what I needed. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the first what thing that comes up. Think that would be a good idea, Rich. <laughs> well, it, it was accidental, but yeah, the uh, first thing that uh, comes up when you type in the word discharge is vaginal discharge, because of course it is. Um, yes, discharge came in in Generation Four, so it was Diamond and Pearl, so it didn't exist at this point in time. There you go. Yeah, okay. I think the cool electric attack that I really like from Gen 3 was Volt Tackle, because like, I remember seeing Pikachu use that in the anime, it was the hypest shit. Oh yes. Which, like, that did eventually get replaced, like, yeah, I don't think he's used the, like, Volt Tackle for quite a while now, he sort of learned Electro Ball in Gen 5, and that, that just kind of became his spectacle move. Pretty much, yeah, and you know, Iron Tail's a mainstay, I'm not sure if he still has the, but he also has like the Z-move, like Super Duper Electro Bolt, that's the proper name, right? Uh, yeah, sure, if you look that up on Bob Video, that's what you'll find as well. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's, that's the thing, like, going by the anime logic, Ash's Pikachu should be fucking OP by now, and I guess technically it is, given it's taken down, like, legendaries. What a fresh take, Flame. Oh my god, like, you should contact Serebi. They would love to ha feature you as an OP ed or something. I don't think anyone on their forums likes me, but whatever. Like, I, I don't really follow anime discourse that much, so anything I've said probably will have been brought up over and over. But, Wait. like, if you think... Their forum doesn't like you, is there something you need to tell me here? <laughs> okay, this is shit from like maybe about eight or nine years ago, but like I th seem to recall a few people not being too keen on me back in their fake card forum, although this was a long time ago, so I doubt anyone there is still there. <laughs> If you know me, you know that sometimes people don't like me. That's just one of the things that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no fault of your own. You don't go out of your way to... <laughs> it just happens. Like, I can't be held responsible for how I come across. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we battled fabulously, and we beat everyone. We get a really odd sum of money instead of a perfect round number, so that completely sets me off. But I want more than just the TM, which is Tom without the M, so give me the Shadow Pokemon. I'm, I'm sure as soon as you know we go to leave, it'll be fine. Let's get some toxic going. I think I'm going to give this to the Umbreon, because the Umbreon, Umbreon hasn't really got much in terms of useful moves outside of Bite right now. I would just like to point out the brilliance of us getting the TM for Toxic after talking about how Flame so obviously trolled the Cerebi forms and pissed everyone <laughs> off. <laughs> no, honestly, that wasn't so much my trolling. That's a more recent thing. That was more of me being like 10 years old and a fucking idiot. Oh. <laughs> what's, changed, what's changed since then, then? I'm not noticing a difference. Well, now I'm 23 years old and a fucking idiot. Oh. 
<laughs> character development, I swear. I guess so, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yes, we were triumphant. Mm, Pokemon give! Yeah, this guy doesn't seem at all suspicious, just waiting for the, you know, guy who's beat the fuck up out of everyone while wearing a mask covering his face. Yes. Also, he has, well, Wes, that is, has a snagum device, so you'd think they'd know something's up. Why was that binder glowing? Because uh, that's an item that we can check out. Yeah, because it's special. I see. But we can't do it in the cutscene, so you're just going to have it glaring at us the whole time that these idiots are talking to each other. I, I think someone, like, asked what foo-foo-foo means in a previous comment section. It's just a laugh. It's an onomatopoeia. Yeah, like, there's a few... I think there might be a kick 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 one as well, which is a little bit awkward now that's a meme, but you know. Mm -hmm. There we go. I was wondering when we get into a battle with these schmucks. Noir, which is noir, but not as cool. Noir's a cool Neptunia go, I'll give you that. <sighs> so much degeneracy you bring into this channel, and I just allow it, because otherwise I'd have to do work. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you're enabling me, so you're also responsible. It's on your track record. <laughs> I suppose so. Richie, do you have any special tips to give us? Uh, or informational trivia about Yanma or Pineco? I'll let you take your pick. You can choose your favourite out of the two. Uh, well, I mean, Pineco is the one that's going to be more useful to you in the long run because it turns into Foratress, which is a surprisingly good Pokemon as proven by um, Sugar Conroy because it's very bulky, very defensive, and uh, it can get off a good old explosion on you if you're not careful. Yamma's a bit, bit crap, really. And if I recall correctly, my uh, the first time I ever played through Pokemon Coliseum, as if I played through it multiple times, I don't think I have, but hey. Um, I'm pretty sure this Yanma is one of the ones that gave me a bit of grief to catch, and I think it's the one that I may have missed initially, slash struggled just to get in general um, it, and it, it's I think it's mostly because it does it comes immediately after you've beaten the Colosseum so you don't really have that much of a chance to sort yourself out uh, yeah. before this okay. fight happens well, I mean like none of these battles are really that hard all things considered yeah, I, I think it was basically I just got really, really unlucky trying to catch this thing. Like, it just did not want to stay in the frickin' ball. And oh, yeah. So, yeah, the RNG just screwed me over, from what I recall. Ninkada is a really weird Pokemon, because I like both its evolutions, but I forget Ninkada itself actually exists. Yeah, if you want to get the Shedinja, that is one of the most unusual evolution criteria, because by... By default, your Ninkado will evolve into Ninjask, which is a really cool design in its own right. It's like a fast ninja bug kind of thing. Uh, I, I like its design, even if it's not all that usable to my knowledge. But if you want this Shedinja, what you have to do is when it evolves, you have to have an empty party space. And when it reaches level 20, you get the regular one that evolves into Ninjask, but the Shedinja just appears in your party. And... Shedinja in itself, it's also got quite an interesting battle dynamic because it only has one HP, you cannot get your Shedinja to have more than one HP but its ability Wonder Guard means that he can only be attacked by attacks that will be super effective against it. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, a shame because Bug's actually quite weak against a lot of things and Ghost yeah. has some weaknesses as well so uh, whoopsie doodle. Although it's really cool, the lore of Shed Engine, which you all probably know by now so I'll keep this brief. Uh, basically if you stare into the hole on his back your soul gets sucked out which you know adds to the creepiness factor in that your Pokemon's back is always facing you in battles. Yeah so it, although that might explain a bit, given that I lost my soul years ago, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now we call the Shadow on, there's not much interesting shit left in this fight. <laughs> well, just destroy them all and let's go home. Oh, Sirskit's so cute. Sirskit's really cute, it's, it's just that um, as a Pokemon it's a little bit useless, as I believe is Masquerain as well. No, 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 Masquerain can kick your fucking ass in uh, Gen 7, mate. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really had much of a problem with Masquerains. This motherfucker right here. All you gotta do is watch our playthroughs and know how much Masquerain. Oh wait, I'm a terrible player, that's right. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I don't remember the Muscarine incident, but I do remember the thing. I can't remember what you were against, but where you let your Halucha die, like, four times in a row, just reviving it and sending it back out, even though you realised it was getting killed the first time. <sighs> Look alright. I do Let's Plays for a living. Obviously, my brain faculties aren't all working at 100%, 100% <laughs> of the time. You let your little fighting burb get beaten up. He can like, take it. He is a luchador. He has honour. Yeah, but they don't mean constantly put him in harm's way over and over. That's just cruel. He's the greatest showman on earth. <laughs> That's for you, Tom, Richie. don't, because I, I, I will... I will start singing. Oh, so, uh... <laughs> if you do, I'll <laughs> kick you out of the call, my friend. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, this battle's pretty much over now, so I'm checked out of this part completely. Ditto. I was trying to work out what Cragsire's animation there was in meant to be, because it looked like it was sort of awkwardly falling forward for a sec. <laughs> That's me. That's me all the time, and people just don't know what the fuck. Well, you see, maybe if... You got a better chair that didn't have longer legs at the back than the front, you might be alright. <laughs> it might completely change your world for you, actually. <laughs> well, maybe if I become super duper rich on Patreon, I'll indulge myself, because I don't think I've ever had a PC chair. No, I'm not complaining, because my current chair is just fine. <laughs> it's just like. You feel like when you become like a certain level of YouTuber and you see all these like reaction videos and whatnot with people in those, you know, stereotypical PC gamer chairs, you should have one as well. But no, I'm the underdog. I have a metal chair from the kitchen. I <laughs> oh, see, that just reminds me of that one thing I saw where this guy, he didn't have one of the like, elite gamer chairs, so he just green screened one in behind him <laughs> on his screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so Beautiful. good. That's amazing. Oh, can we pick up that thing already? I need to have it in my inventory so bad. I know, it just keeps sparkling. It's just like, just, just, just let me pick it up. We'll talk to you after that, but I just need to pick this up so that it's in my inventory so I can read it later. But it, it's it's just driving me nuts because it's just there. Okay, it's like Richie. whenever you're playing uh, okay, you know, with a chest in the background of a you're just like, no! Thank you. Okay, Richie's so... Richie's very uncomfortable about this. Let him have it. The reason <laughs> that Do King's hands are tied is that Mirror B, that motherfucking perfect dancing piece of shit, stole his plus all. Yes. <laughs> yes, that plus all that is such a good battler. <laughs> that we're so desperate for. Yes, there's the fucking thing, Richie. You can sleep oh, easy God. tonight. <laughs> oh, I and I remember that fucker. Yeah, what you see, we'll see a few of these little files around the place. They're basically just giving you documentation on how Shadow Pokemon work. Yeah. And eventually guide you towards what you need to do to purify them and whatnot. So, yeah, that's basically all you got to worry about when you see these. Just read them. It's a little info dump. Although you probably figure out most of this shit just by playing the game anyway. Yeah, I should just call it the obvious files, really. Yeah, although I should clarify there, given it just showed it. I believe earlier in the playthrough I mentioned about Shadow Rush having a higher crit rate when you attack non-Shadow Pokemon. That is specifically when your Pokemon is in hyper mode. Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify that as well, because I saw... Like, people in the comments of earlier videos did ask me why I wasn't immediately calling the hyper mode Pokemon. And sometimes I do just let them sit in hyper mode for a little while, so I can take advantage of that. Okay. Well, yeah, it's part of that strategy whenever you're fighting in Colosseum of deciding, do I want to remain in hyper mode and make use of the extra damage that it'll put out? Or do I just want to get them close to purification? Or do I not want to just run the risk of them either hurting themselves, hurting a party member, not doing any bloody thing at all, or any of that jazz? It's a trade-off. And I believe certain elements of how the Pokemon reacts in hyper mode is also influenced by its nature, if I recall correctly. Because like I, I think the natures are actually obscured to you before, and so you can't look at it ahead of time and think, oh, this Pokemon's more likely to get confused, or it's more likely to attack its partner or whatever. So it is a bit of a gamble, and you get a feel for how Pokemon react. But like, I seem to recall there being certain times in this where my Quilava in particular gets a bit disobedient compared to the others. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm making good use of the Toxic here, because Toxic is actually a pretty beast poison type move, because unlike a regular poison, if you poison a Pokemon with Toxic, the poison damage, act, like the damage output actually increases between each turn. It's pretty so good. The long, 
the longer the, the Pokemon's poison, the more deadly the toxic status becomes on it. You could get a pretty good setup going, and I'm not trying to be like a fucking competitive strategist like THD here. It's very simple, you just cast Toxic, like a fucking magic spell or something out of Dragon Quest, and you just keep spamming Protect, or maybe a bit of Baton Pass every so often. Yeah, just like, ways to whittle it down away at um, It's maybe not quite as prominent as the old Stealth Rock strategy that I see around a lot, but you know, it's still useful to just let the Pokemon essentially rot away passively while you're worrying about your own team. I was thinking more of like a stall strategy flame. I'm surprised you didn't catch onto that. Hell, I mean, I try not to pay too much attention to what you say, just so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, I, I was just looking up that whole thing to do with Hyper Mode and Nature's so basically, don't go the, into a run now. There's less than a minute left for a shoot. It's fine. Basically, uh, the nature affect how well the Pokemon responds to being called. So some will loot, get more of their heart gauge depleted by calling than others. Oh, Nate. So yeah, like that's just one of the ways that contributes towards opening their heart. Yeah. It's gonna be alright! <laughs> oh, thank god, finally, some heals. Alright, guys, we're making progress with tracking down the Shadow Pokemon, but we've gotta get that Prussel back, so see you next time for a bit more of Pokemon Coliseum. Bye for now.